there? I'm glad the Lord's here. How about you? Amen. Number 265. Everybody stand and sing now. Real big loud. Ready, ready, sing now. I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within. Sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters lifted me to sea. Am I but lifted me? See, lifted me when nothing else could help. But lifted me, but lifted me, but lifted me when nothing else could help. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I cling, in his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing, love so mighty and so true, merits my soul best song, grateful love and service to him, love lifted me, say it now, love lifted me, when nothing else can help, thank God. Souls in danger, love Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry way. The master tells his will obey. He, your savior, wants to be be saved. To come on, love lifted me, love lifted me. Sing when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Just remain standing, come on, brother, lead this number 235, he set me free, I want us to sing, he set me free tonight. You know, uh, there's nothing more powerful than the love of God, the love of God, people talk about uh, the, God's uh, wrath and everything, and He is a God of wrath and He hates sin, but His love is stronger. Let's sing 235. Everybody sing it tonight. Amen. Everybody sing it. came and listened to me, and glory to God, he set me free, he set me free, yes, he set me free, he broke the bonds of prison for me, I'm going to rebel my Jesus to see, for glory to God, he set me free, amen. All right, now I'm climbing on the second now. Now I am climbing higher each day. Darkness of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground. And glory to God, I'm homeward bound. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm going to my Jesus to see for glory to God. He set me free. Amen. She's played me. Ready now? We'll sing this last one. This ought to be our heart. This last verse. Now let's sing it together. Goodbye to sin and things that confound. Not of this world shall turn me around. Daily I'm working, I'm praying to. Glory to God, I'm going through. Come on. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm going to my Jesus to see for glory to God. He set me free. Amen. 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 Amen.
You're glad you're here and glad you're in church. Holler, amen. amen. Let's try that again. Some of you look like your mother in law come and moved in about Ooh. six months. Amen. And brought all her furniture uh, and, and, and sold her car. All right, let's try that again. If you're really glad you say, let's say amen. amen. That's better. Appreciate you being here tonight. I'm just really, really happy to be here. I'm telling you, I'm happy to be here. I got I got hooked up just right in the blessing today. I'm telling you, studying and praying. I'm gonna do something that I don't think I've ever done. Uh, we're gonna do three Wednesday nights tonight, next Wednesday night, and the following on Thanksgiving. I don't think there'd be anything wrong with that. Do you? Just thanking him, just thanking him, just thanking him, just thanking him. If you're in a bad mood, I tell you what you ought to do: get down on your knees, start thanking the Lord. If you're if you're sort of old sour and backslid. Tell you what to do. Get down on your knees and start thanking the Lord for what he's done for you, where you could be and you ain't, where you used to be and you're not now, and where you're going to be. Uh, it won't be long you'll be coming out of the slump. Amen. Well, we've all got something to be uh, sad about, but we got a whole lot more to be glad about. Um, telling somebody a while ago, I just up here Sunday talking about coming to church, eating when your relatives show up and, and you, uh, you pipes bust and stuff like that. And ours went out. Water went out this morning. Got no water. Can't flush the commodes. Nobody's, I would advise you to sit over there in that section right there. None of these people's had a shower uh, from my house. I hadn't, they hadn't. Uh, uh, we can't, we ain't got no water. And uh, I went up here to Slows and, and tried to got me a pump and hope have, uh, have get it fixed tomorrow. Pump's gone out. So, Anyway, uh, you know what you do when that happens? You get dressed and come on to church. I'd rather have a, I'd rather have a, a clean heart, a dirty body, wouldn't you? Yeah. Stay home, can't take a shower, no way. Uh, so you might as well come on. You just, you, you do like him drunk, spray a little <laughs> clone or, or aftershave or something on there and try to cover up that old, old sweat. Uh, I run this morning, sweated and everything, but uh, appreciate you being here tonight. Let's just enjoy the Lord. As I said, I want to take uh, three Wednesday nights and and just study on what the Bible says about Thanksgiving. I, I don't think we're going to do it just one time a year or two times a year. So let's just enjoy it being thankful. Let's be thankful. Uh, the Bible says be thankful unto him and bless his name. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And you'll notice a lot of times when, when those things, I'll throw my hand up. I'll, I'll praise the Lord, and, and I don't always feel that. I just do it because it's right, and, and he, he deserves our praise and thanksgiving. Amen. So let's enjoy being saved now. How about it? We're going we're gonna to pray. We've got a lot of folks sick. Uh, Brother Wayne, I had another one of those uh, cancer things took off his head, and he's really under, under you know, he's going to be in for a couple of days. He can't have no sun. No sunlight can hit that at all. It burns like fire. And so he's going to stay in a couple of days. Anthony ate something, poisoned him or something. He's sick at home tonight. And uh, uh, somebody else seemed like well, was sick, uh, but others are not able to get out this evening. Let's remember them in prayer. All the special things coming up. You pray for me. I got to drive down to Savannah tomorrow morning, and I'll be down there for two days. Uh, so don't miss it. Come pray and come help us. Uh, we've got a lot to do. I hate to leave my family the water. No water. That took care of tomorrow and have everything lined up. So, all right, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. If you got something you want us to pray about tonight, Lord knows what that is. A lot of things coming up, our Christmas uh, play, our Christmas banquet, December the 5th, uh, all these things coming up here in the next few weeks, Thanksgiving services, uh, pray about winter camp. We're having people just text from other churches and everyone won't know when's winter camp. When I got a text from Florida uh, yesterday or this morning, won't know when's winter camp. That's become a, it's become a thing, boy. People love it. So uh, let's, let's enjoy the Lord tonight. Let's, let's all just bow our head and go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads and our hearts before you this evening. Lord, it is with thanksgiving and joy in our soul. We come call you our Father. 
through the Lord Jesus Christ and the blood that was shed on Calvary for our sins. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the church. Thank you for the hope that's within us this evening. I pray for every single person here tonight that you'd give everybody here tonight a special blessing. Lord, bless them in a special way for being here tonight. I pray you bless those that couldn't make it, those that had to work, uh, Brother Wayne, uh, Anthony, others, Lord, people couldn't couldn't make it because of work schedules, one thing or another. Bless them. Have you in our hearts tonight? You saw all these hands that were lifted here tonight. Bless every single of them. God, do what ought to be done here tonight. Help us to get all this stuff ready for the weekend, Lord, and uh, the trip down to Georgia tomorrow and, uh, and uh, the service is Sunday. Have you in our hearts, Lord, as we get near the holidays, Thanksgiving, and Christmas, and New Year's. Bless winter camp. Bless uh, our special services at Christmas, and God will give you the glory for it all. Lord, I pray you'd continue to let the revival fire burn here at our church. Lord, stir the hearts of every individual. Lord, keep our buses running. Lord, keep, keep our workers working. Lord, keep our drivers driving. Fill them buses full for the glory of God. And Lord, we'll thank you for what you do. And we love you. Have you in our hearts tonight. Bless this service. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. All right, let's stand and be friendly. Everybody stand. Turn around and be friendly in the Lord. We're going to have a good crowd here tonight, so let's be friendly in the Lord. Be sure and make everybody feel welcome.
All right, kids, you can go. Everybody else remain standing for offering. Amen. Kids, you can go to your class. Uh, they're going to go on back there to their class tonight. And uh, amen, hopefully learn something. They're getting to work on Christmas, hopefully. I hope so. Ushers, come on right quick, and we'll go ahead and do our offering tonight. Marty's going to sing. Amen. Let's everybody give tonight, honor the Lord, and he'll bless you for it. I hope you will. Hope you'll honor God and do something good tonight. Um, be a blessing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all you've done for us. Pray now that your will will be done in our lives, Lord. We ask God to forgive us of all of our sins. Thank you for this, just us with our brothers and sisters, Lord, just like our family here tonight. And Lord, we praise you for that sweet fellowship we have in our church. Bless this offering tonight. Meet the need up, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Job was righteous, man, the devil couldn't doubt it. You surely loved the Savior, there was no doubt about it. Man. Well, Satan cursed his body from his feet to his head, told him all his children and his God over red. Well, Job's wife said, why don't you curse God and die? Yep. Well, Job said, woman, speak like foolish child. Well, ye ain't never hey, done me nothing. Done me nothing but good. Amen. That's right. Ain't never done me nothing but good. I could I know everybody could say amen to that. All right. Now announce a minute ago. I'm gonna do something that uh, we've never done before. Um and I'm gonna take three Wednesday nights. This one the next one, and the one following, and we're going to all become and study what the Bible says about Thanksgiving, being thankful. Uh, usually, I do that one, one Wednesday night before, but I, I'm telling you, the Bible says so much about it, and uh, we have become the most unthankful nation probably in history that I thought it might be good for us to, uh, to become thankful. The truth is tonight... Every one of us could find something to gripe about, but the, uh, the truth is also we've got a lot more to be thankful for uh, than we have to fuss about. If, if you're able to come in here tonight, you're better off than a lot of people. Um, if, you're, if, you're, if you just live in this part of the country, you are richer than most people in the world. So uh, I know you hear me say that, and you might not like to hear it, but we need to be reminded of that because if, if you watch TV a lot, you get the impression that everybody drives a Rolls Royce and lives in Hollywood and all that, and, and they don't. Very small, minute, one-third of one percent or something like that. People live like that, and the rest of the world don't. There's seven billion people in this world, and uh, most of them don't even own a car and never will, never will own a car. Um, I fussed, you know, having to go buy a pump a while ago. Up there it slows, and uh, and I, I first you know grab and and you know what today just, I took a bucket and I went down in the at at the, in the pool and the covers on the pool and there's water that much on and I I, was, I got down on one knee and pulled water out of there poured another bucket pulled water pulled the leaves out of it and poured it in the commode to flush the commode and I was telling them I said you know what this this way everybody used to get their water with a bucket down to the river. For thousands of years. And we think, oh my goodness, we're in the tribulation. God's forsaken me. You know, the air conditioned tore up. Uh, they, they, they put out over there in the gym. And some of those guys was talking about it uh, the other day uh, when I was over there uh, playing. And they said, man, we're finally glad. They're finally getting air conditioned. It's only in Burke County that didn't have air conditioned. My goodness, it's about time. And I thought, you know what? I don't care if I had air conditioned or not. I, don't, I never had air conditioning. I felt like sort of a sissy playing ball in an air conditioned gym. Uh, uh, really, I'm serious. Oh, we grew up. We, I remember. You've heard me say it. The first time I ever felt air conditioned. We didn't have air conditioning growing up. You said, well, what'd you do at school? They opened the windows. You sat in school and you felt it running down your chest. You just wiped it off. And 
I remember the first time I ever felt air conditioned. I was about 10, 10 years old and went in the grocery store in Marion and it was freezing because I never wore nothing but just a pair of shorts. That's all we ever wore all summer. No shirt, no shoes all summer. I don't know how many of y'all grew up like that, but I'm, we never wore shoes and never wore a shirt in the summer. And uh, why, why would you do that? So we, I run around with my shirt off and my shoes off all summer long and run to the grocery store. And I said, whoo, Lord, they've left the freezers open or something in here. This is weird. And it was air conditioned. And now, oh, my goodness. If it tires up, we just about die. And I, don't get me wrong. I like it. And I'm going to use it. But I'm just saying, we are, we're, there's never been a generation in history grew up with the stuff that, that our generation has. So let's look at Ephesians chapter 5 tonight, and we'll start there. And I'd like for us to just take a little while and talk about how thankful we can be and should be uh, and could be. Uh, as I said, I've never done this before, but I've, uh, it's on my heart, so I'm going to do it three Wednesday nights in a row. I hope you'll be, don't, don't, don't say next week, I don't think I'll go. We're just going to say about things. You're the very one that needs it, if that's your attitude. Uh, Ephesians 5, 4, I'll look at one verse. Um, it said, uh, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. My goodness. Instead of sitting around talking dirt, off color Junk, we ought to be giving thanks. Then look at verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Always. Um, I got a text today from somebody in another state and a person had sent them a text and said their son was uh, contemplating suicide. 22 years old and works a job, lives in another state that most people would want to live in. And he said, they said, why, why, is, why do you want to kill yourself? And he said, uh, he's, he wasn't, he, he said his job and his life wasn't fulfilling to him. And I thought, man, that's America right there, ain't it? That's America. Think about them kids over in Africa beating them rocks all day long. I wonder how fulfilling that is. We got the idea in America that you are supposed to be fulfilled. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know. I'm sure. I'm not sure. I understand. If this woman leaves her husband, well, I just, he's not meeting my needs. I'm, I'm, I'm not happy. And I, I tell you, we're living in a generation of brats. Brats. We've got so much. We've got so much that could not, uh, uh, well, if everything should make me happy, everything should fulfill my needs, everything should meet, uh, come, and, and, and the whole world centers around me, 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 and, and the world feeds that. The world feeds that. You deserve it. Do something nice for yourself. You, you know, and, and uh, that's your enemy. That kind of talk is your enemy. Um, listen, you live in another country, you're glad you got a job. It ain't fulfilling. It ain't fulfilling at all. Uh, God's been good to us. So tonight, I want us to think about the power of thankfulness. The power of thankfulness. Um, and the first thing I want to say is, thankfulness never produces negativity. Don't mean to sound like a psychologist, but but. That's the word everybody uses nowadays, that's negativity. But that's truth. There is some truth to that. Thankfulness never produces negativity. You catch yourself being negative about everything all the time, always seeing the bad. And I, I tell you what you're short on, thankfulness. Because if you start being thankful, um, I tell Kelly, I, I think she's, I don't know where she's at. She's back here with Frankie or somewhere. But uh, she's, she's around here somewhere. And today... Uh, that happened. The baby was crying. Water was out. Uh, it, nobody, we couldn't get ready. There she is. And uh, uh, something else happened. I forgot what it was. And uh, we was having some. I had a rough day. Pretty rough week uh, since since Pastor Appreciation Day Sunday. And the devil just jumped all over. And you know what I told her? 
um, and she'll tell you this. I said, you know what? I've been studying on this, and I'm just going to be thankful for what God's done for us, and God's been good to us. And you, you keep that attitude right there. The devil can't hang on too long. Start thanking God and praising God. Thankfulness. If you write these three, these three, four things, three things. Thankfulness never produces negativity. If you don't want to be negative all the time, I tell you how not to be it. Start thanking God. I've been guilty of it. Sometimes I, sometimes I start seeing this is bad, that's bad, and that's bad. And and she she's reminded me that you're you're thinking negative, and she's right. And you know what we got to do? We got to quit looking at the bad, what the devil's doing, and start looking at the good God's doing. I know that sounds like some kind of a psychiatry, but it's the truth. It's biblical. It, it's uh, uh, Some people are, uh, you know, bipolar They is diagnosed as a disease now, I reckon, or a sickness. And what it is, they're saying they are one day and, and just weighed down the next day. And a lot of people battle that. They have a they have a problem staying steady and level. They're they're shouting the victory one day and ready to win the world. Next day, ready to kill herself. Um, and and the way you avoid being that way is train yourself to continually be thankful. Yesterday, I was uh, driving up the that road over yonder. Um, I don't even know. I guess Carbon City Road comes into town and where the old church used to be, but I was in town and uh, it had been raining and they looked and there was an older, old woman uh, on the side of the road. Honest to goodness. It, and and she looked like uh, these these uh, in, uh, commercials. You've seen these commercial, commercials where it says, help us help the Jewish people. Have you seen them? And their faces are all wrinkled up and they got, they got a, a, a thing over their head and dressed real terrible. And man, it just breaks your heart. Y'all, y'all seen them and they're in other countries and you'll, and it'll, it, they're, they, they, they have just strong, hard wrinkles in their face. 70, 75 years old and they, they're starving or don't have nothing. And, uh, there's a woman there, sure enough, on the side of the road and she had a bag. And she sort of put her hand up like that. And I thought, is she want to ride? So I pulled over. And there's a couple of cars trying to get around me. And I think they got mad. But I pulled over inside the, the road and left the turn signal light on and, and uh, opened the door. And she got in. And she was real short. She's about that tall. She couldn't hardly get up in my forerunner. It took all she could do to get up on that step and get up in there. And I said, how are you? And she said, and she couldn't understand a word I said. I don't know what, I don't, I'm not sure. I think she's Spanish. I'm not sure. But she looked just like one of them that you see on the commercial. So pitiful. Broke my heart. And she got her stuff and sat down. And I said, ma'am, you know, what, what's your name? And she just looked at me like, it, it, it. I said, you know who Jesus is? She looked at me. I said, God. And you know, I pointed at her heart. Right? And she went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know if she understood what I said. And I took her to, huh? Oh, you got her too? Well, I'll be. I didn't even tell you about this. And when I took her to where she's going, she got out. I, I, gave, her, I gave her a dollar. And she went, oh. I thought, my goodness, man. My goodness. Bless her heart. She might, I don't know. She might be a drug dealer. I, she pointed. She pointed. I said, Did you show me? She pointed. And then she went this way, and I turned this way. <laughs> Look at that church over yonder that's, I don't know what it is. I thought it used to be a Catholic church. It, it, it's another church. Yes, it looks like an Indian. But she, it looks like, I don't think it's a Catholic church. Ain't there another church right down the street there? Some weird kind of a. No, it's right below the Catholic Church on where y'all used to live on that road. Have you seen her too? She's a drug dealer. <laughs> she burnt me for a dollar. I'm gonna run up. No, I'm not. <laughs> Bless her heart. I feel. So... 
Well, anyway, y'all ruined my story. But uh, <laughs> goodness, huh? The little old man, he's dead. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding, y'all. I'm just kidding. Bless her heart. But anyway, anyway, I got I got to thinking, you know, people just pass her up like she ain't there. And I thought, my goodness, that could be me. That could be my mom. That could be my mom. Y'all, every time I see a drunk, I think that could be my daddy. That could be my daddy. And was at one time. He didn't live on the street or nothing, but uh, the power of thankfulness is it never produces negativity. Well, after I picked her up, I went down the road saying, hallelujah, God's been good to me. I'm saved. I'm in my right mind. I'm going to heaven when I die. Now listen. Now let everybody listen to me. The devil, you think about all the stuff that you don't have. Listen to what I'm saying. The devil will make you think, well, you don't have this, and you don't have that. All of us could say that. I could. You could. This ain't right. That ain't right. You don't have a husband. You don't have a wife. You don't have kids. You don't have a, a house. You don't have a job. You don't have this. And if you do, you hate your job. You don't have a good job like other people got. Or you don't have, you know, you don't have a nice enough car. You don't. Have, the devil will make you look at what you don't have. And you have to train yourself to look at all God's blessings on you. You could be in a, in, a, in a crack house right now out of your mind. You could be in a cancer ward right now breathing your last few breaths. You could be, and people your age and my age are there tonight in, in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a mental institution, not even knowing where your next meal's coming from. You could be in a surgery right now. Listen, God's been good to you. God's been good to every one of us. So start thanking him we're doing three Wednesday nights on Thanksgiving. Start thanking him. Start thanking him. Hallelujah, Lord. You've been good to me. I got a car sitting out there. I got a house at home. I got a bed to sleep in tonight. I got food to eat. I'm, I'm, I'm in my right mind, and I'm saved going to heaven. See what thankfulness will do? You'll be shouting for long. I've been like that all evening, man. Just hallelujah. Lord of God, brother. Um, uh, I, I was When we went on a couple's trip last weekend, I went, took her to um, Tanger, the, the the place up there where all them little stores are, and she, uh, all the outlet mall, and I was walking around out there killing time waiting on Kelly. She was shopping, and I was just looking at people. And I thought, boy, you know what? These are some of the most blessed people on earth. You're walking around in Pig and Forge. That's what I call it. Pig and Forge and Fatlinburg. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, a, that's what I call it. I'm, I give stuff nicknames and we were over in Fatlinburg and, and, uh, and I, and I, I thought these people are sitting there they got a nice car sitting here. They're out walking with their family. The weather is absolutely perfect. We're in the South uh, where the, the weather just, the leaves would knock your eyes out all different colors and people was friendly and everybody having a good time. I thought, man, these are some of the most blessed people in the world. Do you know most people in, you can't do that in New York City. Walk around with bags of clothes and stuff. Somebody run up and grab them. They got to knock your brains out. You can't do that in part of Los Angeles, in big cities. We're, God's been good to us, y'all. God's been good to us. Do you know, there's uh, out in Houston, Texas, where Jack Wood Church is, they have to have guards out in the parking lot the whole service. They had 14 car batteries stolen in one service. One service, one night. We ain't got no guards out there. Huh? Yeah, really. Uh, but, I mean, God's been good to us. I mean, and things ain't perfect, but I'm telling you God's been good to us. Start thanking Him. Count your blessings. If you got kids that are healthy, Count your blessings. When we was down there in Winston-Salem, going room after room after room, little old kids in there with tubes going in their nose, and they're crying, Mommy, 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 it hurts. It hurts, Mommy. All, all day and all night. If your kids are here and back there playing and laughing tonight, 
Don't, don't say, oh, it's Wednesday night. Why I got to go to shout your head off. God's been good to you. He's blessed you. He's blessed you. He's blessed you. He's blessed me and you. Man, you know, one of the things that got people in trouble in the Old Testament, they became unthankful. That's right. And then it said unholy. If you get unthankful, it won't be long. You'll be unholy. You'll be living like a devil if you quit thanking God. That's right. That's right. So, so enjoy it. Amen. Uh, Teresa, our missionary to Ukraine, Brother Nathan's wife, uh, Teresa. Y'all know Nathan and Teresa. They, they've been here not long ago. And she sent, I think it's Carrie. I don't know if she sent it to Carrie or Carrie saw it on her on her nose book. Did y'all see that picture? Yeah, yeah. She took a picture of a little girl about that high, about like Marty, standing outside of a dumpster. And that girl, she'd been climbing in that dumpster trying to find food. And Teresa took her picture. And she said, this is why we're thankful that we get to be missionaries. Kid climbing in a dumpster trying to get food. I'm telling you. Listen, everything at your house might not be right, but I don't think nobody here today had to climb in a dumpster to get food. Most of us threw away enough food to feed a little girl like that. It never produces negativity. So if you catch yourself feeling thinking, this is wrong. That's wrong. Don't like this. Don't like that. You start thanking God. Thank Him. Thank Him. Amen. Just thank Him. Hallelujah. Just thank Him. Amen. They said years ago there was a college, some one college up in Ohio, and got a million dollar donation from one of its alumni, and it was a student who thirty four years before had borrowed two hundred dollars, and they let him have two hundred dollars. And he wrote him a check. He's become a doctor or something. Paid him a million dollars because he's thank man. Uh, uh, never produced. Number two. Number two. Right quickly. Thankfulness is never separated from worship. Amen. Thankfulness is never separated from worship. What I mean? I mean, you start thanking God, you'll be worshiping him. At, at, really, it's almost the same thing. He sort of, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm worshiping and thanking. You ain't going to do much worshiping saying, why'd this happen? God, here, I try to live right. Why'd you let that happen? That ain't worshiping. That ain't thank. You start saying, God, you've been good to me. Lord, you've blessed me way more than I deserve. Lord God, I'm, I've, got a, I've got food in my refrigerator. I've got, I've got a clothes on my back. Uh, at thankfulness. Thankfulness is never separated from worship, y'all. They said these uh, Siamese twins uh, were born. They were uh, uh, connected uh, at, at the heart, like right in here. And uh, I think usually they have two hearts. I don't know if they're the only have one heart, two people. Are. You might know the answer to that. But anyway, they said you can be connected at the arm and get loose or the head or the leg or the hip. But if you're connected at the heart, you can't separate them. And that's the way worship and thankfulness is. Can't separate one from the other. You start worshiping, you'll start thanking. You start thanking, you'll start worshiping. So thank him. I'd like for us to do this as a church this year. Three weeks to Thanksgiving. Two weeks to Thanksgiving from tomorrow. I, we ought to be thanking him every day and mean, learn to be thankful, to be thankful, to be thankful, to be thankful. Amen. Worship, you can't help it. Uh, without thanking God, and you can't thank God without worship. That's right. Um, there's a guy named Martin Rickard, uh, and he wrote a song years ago, and the name of the song was, Now Thank We All Our God, one of those old hymns, and he wrote it in churches by the thousands, sang that song everywhere for years and years and years, and you know what people didn't realize? When he, when he wrote that song, his community was in an epidemic. People died everywhere. They was burying people in trenches, pushing them off in ditches, bury them. And his wife died, and he wrote that song during that time. Another song, All Praise and Thanks to God by John Mincer. He wrote that song after his house burned and lost everything he had. Some of the greatest works are like that were after during personal tragedies. And people still said, yet will I praise him. Yet 
Well, I thank him. You learn how to thank him when things are going good. Learn how to thank him when things are going bad. Who's the example? Somebody give me an example. Job. Job, man. I mean, he praised God when he had everything, and he praised God when he lost everything. Sure did. Job more or less said, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Easy come, easy go. I, I have still know my Redeemer liveth, and I'll stand before him uh, on the at the latter on the latter days. And and one of these days, if we'll get that attitude, if we'll get that attitude. Now I know, you know, I stood up here and said that money, then my my own water went out today. So I get a chance to practice what I preach, and I will this, and I might lose everything uh, uh, material before it's over with. But if it does, if that does happen. You know what I hope I'll be able to say? I'll be able to say, God, you've been good to me. You, you saved me. I was 18 years old. You blessed me. Listen, if God never done nothing else for me in my life, I look back over the last 40 years and say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Yeah. Amen. 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 Been good to me. Been good to me. Amen. I was never separated from worship. And then... Uh, I, want, I want to say something else and then I'll move on. I'll finish. Corey Ten Boom. You've heard me talk about her. All you young people ought to familiarize yourself with Corey Ten Boom. Ten Boom was her last name. T E N Boom. That's a, I don't know what kind of name that is. Ho, there was some Holland, Ger, German. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. I guess that's German. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, she was a, a great woman. A great woman. And her family hid Jews during the, the Holocaust so they wouldn't be killed. Put them in their house and they arrested them and put them in concentration camps. Back then, brother, when you was in concentration camp, it wasn't like it is now. People, people in our, a lot of people in our prisons got it made compared to some people in other countries. But did you know what? She was in there and they put her in one of the worst prisons, her and Betsy, her sister. And somehow they smuggled a Bible in there. If you've never seen the, the movie, you ain't going to hear me recommend but about five movies. And The Hiding Place is one of them. I don't know if you can still get it on, you can get it on YouTube. I think we've got it somewhere. Everybody here needs to watch The Hiding Place. You'll be shouting the time you get through watch. One of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. Uh, that and Sheffy. You ought to watch that movie, Sheffy. Uh, Robert Sheffy, the old circuit riding Methodist preacher. Uh, that Bob Jones University put out 30, 25 years ago. Billy Kelly is in that in that video, and uh, uh, Betsy, Corey Ten Boom, and Betsy, her sister, were put in one of the nastiest, filthiest, flea-infested uh, concentration camps. They were, and they smuggled their Bibles in there, and they had that Bible, and they were always afraid the guards would catch them with that Bible and confiscate it. And you know what? Betsy, if you know the story, my mom always said Betsy was more right with God than, than Corey Ten Boom was because she was always telling her, Corey, don't hate them. Corey, don't hate them. And uh, she said, Corey, we ought to thank God for everything. And, she, and Corey would get down to pray and she'd say, Lord, I thank you for everything. And she said, even the fleas. And she wouldn't say nothing. She said, even the fleas. And she said, I just can't thank God for these fleas. I just can't do this. And finally, she said, even the fleas. And you know what? They found out later on that the reason them guards didn't come in there and confiscate them Bibles, they couldn't stand me around them fleas. So they got to keep the Bible the whole time is in there and read God's word. Man, the price they paid, they had to flee. But I guarantee you they'd rather had that Bible and put up with the fleas. My, my, my. We are some generation, ain't we? We don't read the Bible because it's boring. Too many these and thous and begots and begotten. Man, they put up with fleas. Fleas. You know why? Because them people didn't have nothing but the Lord. That's all, that's all they had. God. And buddy, when, that's, when you get like that, that's when it means a lot to you. Finally, I'll say this and we'll and we'll go tonight. Thankfulness is never just confined to this earth. What I mean by that is when you're thanking God, you're not doing something like like other stuff that ends when you leave this world. This goes right on into the next world. We're gonna be thanking him in heaven. 
around the throne forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We are getting ready for what we're going to do in heaven. I'm glad I used to hear the preacher say that God will give us a little bit of heaven to go to heaven on. And man, I love it when good and people starts crying. We got good singing going on or preaching. People start hitting that altar and weeping and hugging necks and crying. Listen, God can do more for your marriage in, in, in five minutes up here in this altar hugging necks and shedding tears and getting right than, than $10,000 worth of counseling can do without your heart being right. He can do it. The Lord can do more in a sinner's heart in five minutes here than, than all the rehab in the world can do uh, without it. So when we thank him, when we thank him, we're getting ready for heaven. Billy Bray, one of the most uh, unusual characters ever lived. You've heard the story. You heard, I preached about him not long ago. They said he'd go down the road and shout. He'd go down the road, one foot, he'd say, glory. And the other foot, he'd say, praise God, glory. Praise God, glory. Praise God. And he'd go down the road to shout, shouted all the time. They said these boys hid, hid in the bushes one time, and Billy Bray went by, and one of them said, Billy Bray, this is the devil. And he turned around and said, wow, I thought you was a lot closer to me than that. Hallelujah. And just kept on going down the road. I mean, you know, he had the right attitude. He said, I'm saved from hell. I'm not going to heaven. Uh, I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven when I die. I got my names in the book of life. I've got everything the world to be thankful for. His blood is on my soul. And uh, he, he just shouted it out. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 said, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There'll be no more death. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more crying. There'll be no more pain. For the former things are passed away. Mm, 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 mm. what can you think of better and can anybody think of anything better than that living with your creator perfectly content no crying no tears no heartache no broken families no broken dreams no hurt no pain no little kids screaming hollering crying and the former things are passed away can't beat that and uh, and Look what the alternative is. Revelation 2015 said, whosoever is not found written in the book of life is cast in the lake of fire. Not only are we going to get heaven, we're missing hell. We're missing hell. Shouting ground, people. That is shouting ground. Yeah. I'm telling you, I know that I am an extrovert. I understand that. Um, I'm, I, I'm emotional. I express my emotions. You can tell if I'm happy or not happy, can't you? I mean, most of y'all. So I can tell by looking at your face, Brother Danny. You didn't like it. You know, and and that, I can't help it. Other, everybody's not made like that. Some people are real subdued and quiet natured. And we got a lot of them here in our church. A lot of them. There's quiet and subdued. I wish we had a few more crazy people. Well, we got enough crazy people. But I mean, <laughs> loud crazy people. Uh, but we got plenty of crazies. Uh, but... What I'm trying to say is, I don't care how quiet natured you are, if, if God bubbles up in your soul, some, it's going to come out somewhere. Ain't going to be a tear, a hand throw up, a aim. I mean, you, it, you're going to feel like you're going to blow up if you don't let it out somewhere. You start getting a blessing. And you ought to do that once in a while. All right. Uh, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you, and I'm challenging myself. And every one of us, Lord's really been good to us lately. Ever since the camp meeting, there's just been a, we've been on a wave, like a high wave coming in. God's blessed us. People getting saved. Let's be thankful this year. Really thankful. Not saying it. All right, it's Thanksgiving. We thank you for this turkey, Lord. Uh, let's really, really, really be thankful for everything. All right. Somebody want to say something right now? Amen, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I love it. I'm glad I can tell it to the center far and wide. I was sitting at the courthouse for Jack today, and this girl, and I was sitting on the bench reading my Bible. This girl kept looking. I've got to talk to her, and she'd been to prison, lost her kids, uh, had been on drugs, but wasn't on drugs. She's homeless. And you know what I didn't tell her? I didn't tell her what the social service office was. I told her about joy unspeakable and full of Amen. Because if you get blessed.
blessed with all spiritual blessings, and God gets down into this right, you'll have to tell nobody where, where nothing is. They don't know how to get together. That's right. right now. He said, seek you first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added. That's you. right. Amen. Man, I got blessed with all spiritual blessings. Amen. Somebody else want to brag on the Lord right quick. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Make sure you ain't crazy, huh? Amen. 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 My, my, you see something poor folks like that. And it's not that we're better than they are or nothing like that. It's, their eyes are blinded by, you know, by that the veil of that old false religion. Anybody else want to brag on the Lord? Go ahead, Ash. Amen. 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 That's right. Sure do. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Praise God. That's that's the way to She remembers getting saved over in the old building. She come on the bus. You was how old? Nine years old. Ain't that some? You think them bus kids don't remember it? You think they're oh, I'm the little kids? They don't know what they're doing. Ain't that something? Anybody else? You brag on him, it might get sweeter in here. Amen. Yeah. Hey, amen. That's right. That's right. Hey, amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord been good to me. Yeah, it is. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, Frankie. Frankie can praise the Lord. He can. I, I just can't think of nothing better than getting blessings from the Lord. Amen. I mean, win the lottery, man. Forget that. I just think that there ain't nothing better than the Lord. No, they ain't. No, they ain't. Amen. Be content with what you've got. I'm telling you. There ain't nothing like that. No. No, there ain't nothing better in this world. There ain't nothing better in this world than church and God when it's real. Anybody else? Right quick. Go ahead, sister. Amen. I seen them up here. Amen. Amen. You're 
Amen. 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 Let's sing I love him. Let's all stand. And I don't know how many of y'all know this. It's real easy. Uh, one of y'all that do, please try to get some parts or something with it. And uh, let's let's just try to sing it, brother. If you, you want to lead us, I'll try to sing I'll something. Sing we'll sing all right. Together. All right. Let's sing it tonight. Everybody know Amen. this song? Ready? I love him. I love him because he first loved me and purchased my salvation on Calvary. Let's do it again. Ready? You got it now. Let's hear you now. Ready? I love I love him because he first loved me and purchased my salvation on Calvary's tree. Yes, sir. Amen. All minds and hearts clear. Amen. 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 We'll meet Saturday morning. Go visiting. Sunday morning, Sunday school, 10 o'clock. God bless you. Your liberty to go. Uh, everybody fellowship. Be friendly in the Lord. Have a good time fellowship here tonight before you go.